Hi, I'm Tone Lanzillo, and this is Climate Duluth. Climate Duluth is a series of conversations with people here in Duluth and around the world who are concerned about and engaged in addressing climate change and its impact upon our society. Today, I'm, I'm very happy to invite Martha Stevens and Manlio Pertot, who are the organizers, creators of the Human Exploring Society. Uh, welcome, guys. Hi, Tony. Hi, Tony. Thanks for having us. Great to have you all here. Um, Thank you. Good to see you. And normally, you, you're living in Italy, correct? Uh, yeah, we live uh, in Scotland and in Italy. <laughs> yeah, a bit yeah. of both. Okay. Um, yes. And are you in Scotland right now for any particular gathering or project? Um, we're mostly here to see my family, <laughs> to oh, spend okay. a bit of time with them. Um, it's a totally different climate here in Scotland. We went from, you know, heat waves still in Italy in, uh, this time in October, November, to completely wet. We've had constant rain over the last few weeks here, but um, it's nice to be here. And yeah, we came back just to see what was happening with the COP27 events. Obviously, last year we had COP26 in Glasgow. So this year they were hoping to kind of organize some, uh, yeah, protests and marches. Um, outside of Egypt. <laughs> Why don't we begin by telling us a little bit about the genesis or the ideas behind the Human Exploring Society and its mission? Sure. Yeah, in 2020, uh, basically, uh, we started to think about this project because we wanted to uh, put together some ideas we had during our experience, our personal individual experiences uh, in activism. Uh, in different forms of activism uh, regarding the uh, environment, human rights, etc. So uh, me and Marta put together these uh, these different backgrounds, and um, above all, we arrived to a uh, um, uh, to the final decision to create something new that could uh, actually give uh, could highlight the reasons why we need. Uh, a focus on human rights beside a focus on the environment and that these two issues were uh, for too much time I would say they were put, they were uh, aside and um, and so also in the world of activism was uh, was like there was this divi there was this division between the the issues regarding uh, human rights the issues regarding the environment while we felt and we feel we are feeling more and more they they go together and uh, our voices can be more effective and more efficient when they are together um and so we created the human exploring society that is a, a platform yeah it's a media activism platform um of course you know media has such an influence these days um maybe the biggest influence <laughs> um and it's a way of uniting kind of creative people i suppose we are a, we are a creative studio you know bringing together artists designers graphic people uh, authors journalists photographers all these kind of things um because we just feel that this is a really strong way that people respond i think news can be overwhelming you know the bad news that we get and people don't quite know how to respond and i think through art through videography i think people just find um find that they can respond to one or the other um you know people respond to different things they're inspired by different things maybe that's the best word inspiration we're trying to inspire people inform people um about the events um and give give the truth and yeah inspire them to make a change the necessary change well, where your your interest and concern for human rights um where does that come from is it from personal experiences or things you've you've seen happen around the world, but yes, where does that interest and concern come from? Of course, from a personal experience. Um, I mean, in uh, in Italy in particular, we are facing, uh, we have been facing in the last uh, years, a uh, big problem 
being a frontier to uh, immigration uh, due to unsolved problems uh, in um, Africa, Middle East, etc., caused by the, <laughs> the capitalism and uh, the exploitation coming from our countries. And, uh, and that big clash reason was a reason for me to understand uh, why that was happening and how we can solve this. And of course, all things uh, coming from the, the big climate change uh, uh, things were, uh, were a normal result of, of all of this. For, I mean, in, a, in, a, in all the Mediterranean area, there are people, um, you know, uh, running away from wars, both wars and uh, big uh, problems with uh, with the environment in their countries, and uh, famine uh, and uh, other things uh, that you know are uh, caused by uh, climate change. And uh, for me, that was natural to say, okay, we have to face not just not just to help these people. That is right, of course, but we have to face why it is happening and how we can solve it. And at the same time, we will solve also the climate crisis because the climate crisis is happening now. Finally, even in the news, they are starting to say the climate crisis crisis is also a social crisis. There is a social injustice in the world, and that's why we are facing this. We are exploiting too much some countries, and there are. Uh, on the other side, some countries w who are enjoying too much <laughs> of of the wealth of the world, and so yeah, it comes from there. <laughs> In creating this platform that you that you have developed and, and that I've been so impressed with, um, can you share some of the people or organizations that you've engaged that have been supportive and that you've been able to collaborate with? since you began um, the society? been a number of people in different ways along the way. For starters, probably one of our most influential moments was, as I said previously, at COP26 last year, as it was held in Glasgow, which is very close to where we, where we stay at the moment. And we worked um, as part of the COP26 coalition, which was a coalition of about 100 different organizations and individuals who came together um, to create media all about the activities outside the walls of the COP. So the, the activism on the streets, we held uh, talks in, uh, in local libraries and things. And it was just about um, capturing that in different media forms. So it was really powerful to work alongside all these people and, and kind of feel the energy outside the walls. I mean, it, you know, the result to maybe in the public eye of COP26 was very negative and it, it, it is still very negative. However, the energy from the people from the streets, from from the people who were talking on stage was was immense. Um, so we've we've been working on and off with these people since since that moment last year. We've also recently um, under or started our campaign, which is a um, a plastic pollution campaign which is in the south of Italy which is where Malia is from and um, we've been working with many local um, charities and associations. associations yeah um, there's how many of them were there maybe 24 maybe? joined this uh, local campaign for yeah. it, it was called it is called uh, exploring cleanup because we we wanted to highlight the fact that in order to take care of an area, you have to understand why that area is valuable and why you should invest money, energy, time, in, and pressure on the government, local uh, councils to take care of that area. And so we organized with some experts of the area in different areas, geologists uh, yeah, and uh, teachers. Uh, science teachers. Uh, we organized a, a cleanup that was also a walk through the area to understand why that area was valuable. It, 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 it is a, a shore, and a, it, sh it should become a, a natural marine reserve. And uh, so uh, our aim uh, working with these other organizations is to, is 
to right. arrive to that, <laughs> to promote that, to uh, create a, a marine reserve of that area. Um, yeah. yeah. But equally, outside of organizations, we've also been lucky enough or, or found that through this, we've been able to connect with people all over the world, such as yourself and um, people in all different countries. I mean, that is the the blessing of media, of our social media. You know, you can connect with people far and wide of a similar similar topics and and so you know we've uh, we've borrowed music from people in Africa and uh, we've had articles from from yourself and we've had some graphics from Greece yeah he's an illustrator he's from Greece I mean it's a, it's a wonderful place to have a platform and then bring people together under under one umbrella for the purpose the sole purpose of informing the public. Mm. Um, is um, yeah, it's very rewarding for us, and we hope that it's the same for the people who receive it. <laughs> when you look towards the future, whether it's the coming year or maybe three to five years from now, do you have any thoughts or ideas of where you'd like the society to go or where you'd like to take your platform? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we're always looking to the future and the next steps. I mean, the climate crisis, the social crisis is uh, speeding up very quickly. You know, we're always trying to respond. Um, I think through our initial experience with this first campaign in Italy, we've, we would love to do more of this. I mean, we feel that everything starts from the ground and from local communities. I mean, every community, every country is different. We all need different responses to these crises. And um, we feel like found in Italy, speaking to the local people, the local groups, they have the knowledge and sometimes they just don't know quite how to apply it or they don't have the coverage or, um, yeah, or the public interest. So we would like to support this or even generate it maybe in a community where nothing is happening. Um, and also to offer voices to people who maybe don't have the um, the knowledge or even the time, you know, um, that's what we'd like to do. But equally, as I said, we're a, we're a creative studio, so we're working on some short films at the moment oh, wow. because we've always um, responded well to, you know, documentaries. I mean, uh, at least I always have my whole life. Um so yeah, we've decided to sort of venture into that with some of the connections we made. Um, and so we're doing this one about the plastic pollution, also one with an animal sanctuary about um, the potential of veganism and how plant-based solutions are maybe the way to go. Um, yeah, can you think of something else we'd like to venture into? We've got lots of grand ideas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lo lots of grand ideas. Also collaborating with other uh, um, organizations, uh, which are offering, we are offering our uh, our time and energy and knowledge. And just to make an example, we are going to um, translate a whole documentary uh, in Italy about uh, pollution in a particular area. An industrial area and yeah small and big uh things but what we are focused on is that uh we want to help people uh, help of course artists journalists etc uh to come together on uh, mm, uh, th those issues are particularly urgent in this moment and of course climate change is number one but uh, beside that, there is this uh, big need in, in this moment, at this moment, uh, to um, free the information. Uh, we have a big problem, a worldwide problem, <laughs> uh, to uh, let people know how to act and where to act. Because as I like to always to remember uh, what uh, Julian Assange, when he was a free man, <laughs> uh, uh, liked to say that people have a sense of justice. If if they know uh, where to act and why to act, they act. Uh, but we have to give them, we have to give people the opportunity to know about the 
big important issues and they and then they will act they will stand uh, uh for uh, for the right causes uh they will do it so um what we would like to uh to act more is to help the world of information that means not just journaling but as marta said also the world of art that makes uh, everything uh, uh easy to be understood or you know basing also the the, the message on feelings mm -hmm. uh helping them to highlight these issues and uh, bring these messages uh as wide as possible mm -hmm. well, and you two are great examples of your reflection um as we know the work that you all do can be challenging what or who motivates you to not only keep doing what you're doing, but gives you the energy, especially in those difficult and frustrating moments. But yeah, where do you find your motivation or inspiration? Yeah, well, I mean, it's a very boring answer. I find inspiration everywhere, but I suppose I find it from communities, from when we do work on the ground, you know, when you're working side by side people, um, they really inspire me because you hear people's stories and uh, I think that's the most valuable thing. We all have an individual story and um, I mean, not to be too solemn, but I think these days there is a tendency to feel very anxious and overwhelmed with these crises and um, I think although we try to encourage people to act, maybe some people find that um, overwhelming and actually we want to empower people by bringing them together through this sense of community, through connecting to our stories. You know, um, I think that's the most valuable thing. And I think people start to sort of think, okay, this is manageable, this is tangible. If we, if we work together and to each other and yeah, I, I find my inspiration through, yeah, through, through people, through talking through people. Yeah, for me, the goal yeah. is that are they are the, my two children, <laughs> uh, my son Francesco, who is 13, and my daughter Alice, uh, who is uh, 11 and a half. <laughs> yeah, uh, they are a big inspiration because uh, I feel also the urgency and the need to give them to, just the opportunity to fight for, for a better world because I, I feel privileged, uh, honestly, in having had a, a, a good life thanks to my parents, thanks to the, uh, the conditions where I grew up, etc. But I, I don't feel if we still go this way that for my children will be the same. Uh, honestly, we need a, a big, huge change. Uh, that doesn't mean just uh, uh, um, cutting the emissions, but it means uh, uh, changing the way the way we live, the priorities in societies, uh, because otherwise, and the next uh, um, uh, threat <laughs> will come. Uh, will not be uh, climate change. Will be something else. But what we need to understand is that uh, we. Uh, we still go uh, this way. We still uh, prioritize the, the the wrong things. We, we, everything will be difficult to be fixed. And honestly, so uh, knowing that uh, uh, the young younger generations uh, just uh, lived through these difficult times, made of many crises, economical crises years ago, um, and uh, environmental crisis and wars and etc uh, knowing that gives me the the push to to act and do something good to fix all of this right well as a father to two sons myself i appreciate that manlio um in your work with the society uh, what have it been your interactions with young people high school college students uh, what kind of response have you gotten from that group I think, um, I mean, I suppose the place where we tend to meet them is uh, on the streets. <laughs> um, and 
our response has been that they are full of energy and uh, you know they are ready to fight this fight effectively um i think it, as long as they have the resources they would absolutely take us in the di right direction I, I think um i haven't met too many young people who are uninformed i think they all know exactly what's going on you know that there's no denial there there's no matter what their backgrounds are um i think they all bond together i mean not to refer again to it, but during COP26 last year, I mean, oh, how many were there? It was 50,000 or something um, wow. kids? Or one, 100, yeah, I guess for future, um, yes, it, there was a march of uh, young people, 100,000 young people together, you know, screaming in the streets. I mean, that's powerful. You can't ignore that. Um, I think it is magical. And, um, I, I think also, you know, they, <clears throat> I think adults respond to them better than adults talking to adults in some ways, you know, you, you can't ignore, ignore children and um, I mean, it's their future that we're fighting for. So yeah, our experience has been positive. Um, I, I suppose. Yeah, well, I, I feel the same about the, the knowledge they have. Um, but what is uh, a very, uh, very upsetting is that most of them don't have a huge confidence uh, things will be fixed. Mm. Right. The, uh, the more they know, the more they are, uh, the less they are confident things will be fixed. Mm. Uh, and that's very sad. That's very upsetting. So I guess one of the uh, goals we should have as organizations, movements, et cetera, uh, working in this uh, area should be to not just to inform, not just to say how uh, dangerous it is to still go this way, but also uh, beside all of this, saying there is a way the things, the uh, same science uh, saying that there is a threat is saying there is a solution. And and we can fix things, we can work together. There are millions of people available to work together and, and, uh, and solve these problems. Uh, it was uh, um, just a few days ago before the starting of COP27, it came out a report from the um, uh, International Institute for the Sustainable Development. And uh, basically they say it, it was a report uh, uh, useful also for the, the works of the COP27, no? And basically, they said that uh, if we divert five, um, 570 billion dollars from fossil fuels, uh, of course, money, public money, we are talking about public money, 570 billion dollars from fossil fuels to wind and solar energy, actually, we can meet the uh, 1.5 uh, uh, degrees target, mm. but we have to divert that. And these organizations are made and paid by those governments who are ignoring their own scientists. Who are they, they are paying? They are paying them. They are paying for this information. And mm. these scientists, these experts, are saying there is a way. <laughs> it's not impossible. It's not. It's not uh, rocket science here. Just divert this money from this to that, and we, we, we can fix it. So mm. actually, it, it seems uh, something uh, upsetting, but it's good news because mm -hmm. it means that uh, the so problem true. is in a few people. Of course, they are powerful. <laughs> of course, they are in charge of big countries and big uh, institutions, but they are a few people. They are not, they are not as many as us. Right. Thank you. Um, so when do we think we'll see the first documentary film coming out? If you're <laughs> um, well, we are aiming for the end of the year, I suppose. Um, we've got a, a kind of gallery presentation of some of the plastic and the pollution that we collected from the beach clean, I think is going to be displayed in a, in a local gallery in um, the south of Italy. So that will be a kind of... Um, 
maybe finale to the film. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's underway. It's in production. It's all it's all pretty much been filmed. So yeah, as long as I find some time to finish the editing, then it should be in the next uh, few months. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Because uh, here in Duluth, we've had various plastic campaigns over the past few years. So I look forward to hearing about the progress on your report. Um, yeah. For those who have um, checked in today and watching this conversation, how can people find out about the society? What are some of the ways they can learn more about what you're all doing? Uh, through our channels, yeah, which are the Facebook channel, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, we update every day um, things about you know, uh, these issues relevant issues and uh, of course we post also special projects there uh, through our youtube channel uh, yeah on our, our youtube channel we also have uh, uh, two special playlists uh, of songs uh, about human rights and another special playlist of songs about environment so which just if you need some inspiration yeah <laughs> it, it's a kind of uh, yeah good inspiration uh, for uh, yeah. for your uh, for yourself or for uh, your guest right but, uh, yeah on all of the channels it's just our our project name the human exploring society so hopefully people can find that and we also have a a website um which is the human exploring society dot life um which is where we kind of share all of our news but every sunday we post an article um which is a sort of finale to the week uh, all about human rights climate animal rights mm -hmm. various topics um from authors all, all over the world okay cool well i truly want to thank martha manlio for being with us today and um, look forward to staying in touch and collaborating in the future absolutely tony absolutely. thank you so thank much thank you for inviting us, us. Yeah. our pleasure and everyone have a good day and take care